Halloween, the time of year to make use of discounts. Use code HALLOWEEN21 on VintageGenetics.com for 20% of all clothing store-wide. What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. Today is a chest day, and today is also the first time we are doing the bench press, the free weight barbell bench press in a lot of months. So I'm gonna see if I'm gonna put this in my chest rotations. So this is going to be the third or fourth warm-up set. A lot of warm-up sets are necessary to make this exercise successful and safe, so we're gonna see where we end up. I'm gonna show you a few warm-ups, but of course the working sets are the most important. Let's go. Alrighty guys, we are back to true old school training. The off season truly begins because this pretty much is my first chest workout where I don't take into account the reps in reserve for example, which means we are going to failure. We are now establishing the load that we are starting with and the load, which means the amount of weight times reps that you do, that I have to beat every single time I do the same exercise. So that is very fun. That to me, this is bodybuilding. This is you know progressive overload, objectively making sure that you get stronger and when you get stronger you know that you are progressing in muscle mass as well while your shape is being retained weight is being increased not only the weight you lift but also your body weight and that is what this type of workout is all about so the first uh, exercise is the bench press and obviously I am training with my brother Kane we are both wearing all new oversized gym shirts and remember all clothing this Halloween weekend 2021 is 20% off with code Halloween 21 but anyway this is the bench press so I honestly haven't done this movement in a lot of months, so I had to get used to it, mostly because it's a true free weight movement. And since I usually train alone uh, back at my own gym in 100% Fit Gym, I use the Smith machine a lot, which doesn't require a spotter at all. So that's why I use the Smith machine, because it doesn't require anyone to help me when I fail, but when I train with my brother, who at the moment is actually stronger than me, because I'm coming out of a show, but at the same time, he is strong regardless. He, I really trust him standing behind me because no matter how heavy the weight is, he will always be able to help me, and that's just very awesome. And for those who do not know, this gym is the first gym I've ever trained in for seven straight years with my brother, so we're really you know, accustomed to each other, in tune with each other. And this was the first working set, so that's my strength right now for the first working set. So I think that was nine reps with 150 kilos. And to me, it was pretty surprising that I was able to lift that amount of weight uh, with the bench press because I honestly thought I would give up at around 140 kilos, but that still felt pretty uh, stable. So I went up a little higher. And always, guys, the increments in weights when you're beating new previous weights should be very low in order to prevent injuries, especially on the bench press. Another way to prevent injuries is going all the way down, as I'm doing here. So if you do hit failure and you're never going all the way down and then you do break that range of motion, that's the exact moment in time where you could, you know, occur or an injury could occur because that's a range of motion your body and your muscles are not used to. So this is working set number two. Okay guys, the next movement is a chest press. The biggest difference here is with the bench press, you don't really get that super contraction, that maximum contraction. Here, because of the converging handles, you actually do get a contraction. It's a different angle, it's a different way to hit the chest. So uh, let's just do this in a controlled fashion. So as I mentioned, the biggest difference with a bench press and a chest press 
is that with a bench press, when you go all the way up, you don't get that superior contraction, which you do get here with the chest press because of the handles they are coming together when you press forward and that is very important because if you have trouble with mind muscle connection and a lot of people have especially when starting out with the bench press then the connection simply isn't there for me it has always been there i get a very very good pump in doing the chest i mean when with the bench press or any free weight chest exercise so i don't need a chest press but i do like it a lot for variation and the contraction the squeeze part simply does feel a lot better it allows me to more focus on the stretch and the contraction whereas the bench press is simply focus more on keeping constant tension in the chest which is something different but both of them full range of motion and time on attention are part of muscle growth so that's very important and ever since i did that leg workout in mexico with my coach i have been doing some exercises slightly differently so on an exercise like this where I am able to fully stretch but also fully contract, just fully focus on the muscle that I'm training itself, just like that leg workout with my coach, I simply do. So when I'm very strong on an exercise like this one, for example, I'm able to do the full stack for around 8 to 12 reps then what you have to do is make the exercise more challenging for the muscle without doing any weird stuff. And the most logical thing is simply to slow down the reps, use full range of motion, and actually pause for half a second or a second at the squeeze, at the contraction part, and you will feel that chest so much better, the pump will be so much more superior that it's something you have to experience yourself because if you have a poor mind muscle connection the squeeze the squeeze in an exercise like this will grant you the maximum amount of opportunity to get your mind inside the muscle because the muscle is then filled with blood and that is what we want guys we want the combination of heavy weights and blood in the muscle, aka the pump, aka metabolites, metabolites building up in the muscle. And what I mean with that is, for example, lactic acid and uh, you know, toxins, toxic material, basically, in general, because that is what tells your brain, oh, something is going on in this muscle, something is pushing us beyond the limits of what this muscle can do, so we have to grow. That is really the most basic way of explaining what is going on beyond simply lifting heavy and going to failure, where your brain also gives you that response. And then one of my simply favorite movements for I think about one and a half years now, the incline bench press on the Smith machine. However, it almost looks like I'm not doing an incline uh, bench press, does it? It's because this incline is at the least possible incline this bench can go. So I think it's around 15, maybe 20 degrees, but I think around 15 degrees. That shift in angle is already enough to target the chest in a different way. And what is the difference between this and the flat bench press? Well, the incline bench press hits the upper chest more. So a lot of people have a great developed lower chest. But if you want a great developed entire chest, you need to target and isolate, well not isolate, but try to emphasize the tension on the upper chest as well. And you can do that by doing an inclined version of a double press, a chest press, or a bench press like this. And as you just saw, I didn't need Kane to spot me, my brother, because this machine already spots me on my own. I can simply re-rack the weight if I can't go on anymore. And you saw that my first set was, I think, six reps or five or six reps, which is to me the absolute minimum reps that I have to do in order for it to still be safe and at the same time still give me enough stimulus for muscle growth. And this is exactly why I like to do two working sets with different 
rep ranges because sometimes you come to a working set and you can only do like four reps and if you then uh, go on to the next movement in my opinion there hasn't been enough stimulation of the muscle because there simply wasn't enough volume of reps to optimally stimulate the muscle fibers for growth and that's why when you do another working set of more reps you're able to do this more in a safer manner so less injury risk and also get a better mind muscle connection a better pump but also more volume and stimulation for the muscle to grow and then we're doing the last chest movement a pack deck now there's a lot of different pack decks out there just make sure that you adjust the seat so that you're not too low or too high so that's basically um, the handles you're able to grab them at around middle chest height without your elbows being at the same level as your shoulders because otherwise you're, you will be doing too much front delts so what you should also do with an isolation movement in my opinion is up the volume so up the reps a little bit i was only able to do 10 reps with a given weight so i decided to do a drop set to increase the amount of reps which means increase the amount of metabolites blood in the muscle for that secondary uh, signal of muscle growth and also here truly focus on full range of motion so go all the way to the back feel you know consciously feel that stretch if you don't feel those muscle fibers stretching you're simply not performing the exercise in a correct manner or you're going too light or too heavy not allowing for correct form so truly guys back in the day in this very gym i used to train way too heavy yes i did develop some muscle mass because i simply have the genetic makeup to uh you know above average build muscle mass for but for most people you simply have to not think about the weight at first the first thing you do is think about the range of motion the form the mind muscle connection get a pump in the muscle once all of those things are checked off then you can increase the weight not altering any of those check marks and that's when you will grow to the max now after the chest i usually do the side delts but i kept the volume just a little bit lower here because you know you have to admit still i think under two weeks from the mr olympia in this video post show so i didn't want to do too much volume by adding side delts to this uh day to this chest day because usually i do all my chest movements then i do two side delt working sets and then the triceps but for me the triceps require a bit more attention compared to the side delts i will always be able to build up the side delts uh, in in a proper mass symmetry proportions compared to the other muscles but the triceps are a different story so also after training with my coach stefan and this time in the USA, we did a chest and tricep workout. When he saw me doing the rope push down, I was doing it a bit too quickly. So when I went down, I didn't actually go all the way down. So now every time I do the rope push down, I simply lower the weight because then I can do more quality reps going all the way down. And the moment that you can't go all the way down anymore, that's when a set is over. And if you can't do enough reps that way, then you have to uh, lighten the weight because i want quality muscles guys quality over quantity so even though i could go a lot heavier and maybe build muscle in a faster way the ultimate result would leave the muscle less qualitative injury risk higher etc etc so bodybuilding is about isolating the muscle in the best possible way which i'm explaining here to kane as well when you're not used to it when you're used to simply training you know in a limited range of motion with higher weights it's going to be more difficult to then change your training all of a sudden and uh you know leave your ego basically at the door using lighter weights but then applying that full range of motion but one thing you have to keep in mind is that you don't have to worry about the weight because once you get that full range of motion down the weight you previously did will come back 
but then with the correct form and the muscle mass will grow especially in weaker areas of the body like for me the triceps even though with a pump they look pretty good but without a pump they still are a weak point especially when i diet down for example for the mr olympia the triceps in comparison to the biceps uh, you know, shrank down a little more, so I need to build more tricep mass, and that means the traditional training I did to the triceps was not sufficient to make them as big as my biceps, so you have to be honest with yourself and, trains, and change, adjust your, uh, you know, rep quality a little bit in order to make them grow, and that's exactly what I'm doing. And of course, when you have a good chest pump, a tricep pump, you have to do some poses to see what you look like in optimal pumped up, filled with blood conditions. And this is the Stay Golden Stringer, also available on VintageGenetics.com using code HALLOWEEN21 for 20% of all the clothing that we are wearing in this video and a whole lot more. And this is almost the last movement, but I'm making use of this movement, the tricep dip machine, because I don't have the opportunity to do this at my own gym. You know, I can do body weight tricep dips, but they simply are different because they don't allow for a contraction and a stretch like this where you can, you know, put your upper body in such an angle that you truly target the triceps and not the chest as much. So what you have to do is not lean forward as much during this movement. Simply bring up your elbows until, guys, and this is important, until you feel the stretch in the triceps. If you feel a stretch in the chest before you feel a maximum stretch in the triceps, you are leaned forward too much. So you have to lean back a little bit until you feel the optimal mind-muscle connection in the triceps. So go lean back a little bit, go all the way up with your elbows, with your arms, feel the triceps stretch. Once you feel that stretch, that's when you press down and contract the tricep as well. Once again, full range of motion for fully developed triceps. Something very important to do because, you know, most dip variations, most dip machines or bodyweight dips or weighted dips, you always target the chest so much easier because the chest is so much stronger. Same goes with the front delts. So what's very important is that you try to isolate the triceps away from those other muscles. However, it is still a compound movement, so you're not truly isolating this uh, the triceps from the rest. You're always going to be using the chest and the front delts because you're not only using the elbow joint, but also the shoulder joint, which the chest and the front delts are attached to as well keep that in mind so one way to more easily feel the triceps as opposed to the other muscles is by doing a pre-exhausting movement like the rope pushdown we did before so if you have trouble feeling the muscle doing an exercise which is a compound heavier movement what you simply have to do is do an isolation movement like the rope pushdown or any other you know is true isolation movement to get a pump in that muscle that you're training to more easily be aware of where that muscle sits on your body and then do the compound movement making it so much more easy to feel the muscle while you're doing the compound movement it saves you having to do a lot of weight because that is always going to you know uh be injury risky and especially if you can't really feel that muscle and you're going too heavy what you're probably doing is making it a true compound movement where all muscles that are being used in that movement are actually being stimulated equally and what you don't want to do is that because we are not power lifters we're not strong men where all the muscles need to work together as efficiently as possible we actually want to make it as inefficient as possible by only using and feeding the muscle that we are trying to target so when you're training chest side delts and triceps when you're doing a chest movements what you truly want to feel is only the chest and not thinking about moving the weight from a to b 
only focus on the muscle that you're working, guys. And uh, yeah, all in all, I'm very happy with the shape I'm still currently in. Right now, I weigh about 9 to 10 kilos above my stage weight, uh, which is actually not too bad compared to what I used to weigh pretty quickly after a show because I stay pretty lean, uh, you know, even when I weigh 15 kilos more. But at the same time, I want to stay insulin sensitive. I want to stay in a, you know, in a conditioned shape as much as possible. And yeah, I want to thank you also for watching. And don't forget... VintageX.com Halloween 21 for 20% off. Thank you a whole lot for watching and don't forget to stay golden.